This video is sponsored by Omaze. The time has come to redo the power system in this van. It has definitely been one of the weirder, quirkier things that we've had going on. We had an original power system from the 25-year-old camper conversion, and we decided to retain some of it. We actually just have been using the 25-year-old wires. The vent fan, for example, is on the original connection. There's this random switchboard thing tucked underneath the uh, underneath the sink that I reuse, it's like all the switches are in Japanese, like it's the original power stuff. And I want to pull it all out, guys. I want to remove everything, as much of it as I can. If I can't get to some of these wires, I'm just going to stick them away and tape them off and be done with them because I want to start from scratch. I have a plan for a full solar system. This will be the first DIY setup that I've done since my element days. I did a couple of simple solar setups in my elements. But since then, it's been a couple of years since I've really built a full system from scratch. I think it should be a little bit easier now, though. There are tons of amazing resources online. I want to give a big shout out to Will Prouse. If you guys haven't heard of him, definitely check him out. He has a lot of great information, and I'm actually going to be roughly using one of his wiring diagrams for this setup here that I'm about to install. I have a bunch of stuff coming in the mail. It should be here today and tomorrow. But before I can even start thinking about that, I just need to start cleaning up and get rid of the old system entirely. My plan with this new system here is to use a Renogy MPPT charge controller that also has a DC to DC charger built in. So it's a 30 amp all in one charge controller. I think that's going to be a lot easier for us. It'll charge off the alternator while we're driving and then it'll also charge off the solar panels and ideally we won't even have to think about it. It'll just do what we need to do. We don't have to switch it on or switch it off. It's just going to work. That's the plan. That's, that's hopefully what we're going to achieve here. And I guess one of the convenient things about this style of setup, particularly in the high ace is that the starter battery for the van is located inside the cab. It's actually right here behind the passenger seat. So it should be pretty easy for me to run the cable from the positive terminal of the starting battery to the uh, to the charge controller. I will be able to do it all inside the van. We we'll don't have to worry about going through firewalls or anything like that. Really the only thing that was tied in with the old wiring to the old system is our vent fan. And in order to switch that, I'm actually gonna have to remove that rear wall and also the beautiful plant thing that Shannon has back there. It's all going to have to come down so that I can then access the wiring and splice in a new wire, which I'll then run to our new system. I don't really want to do that right now though, so I think I'm just going to move on to the next steps. All right, next is this thing here. It absolutely has to go. I built this in a Walmart parking lot while we were on the road. It worked okay for plugging our stuff in, but it also destroys all of our USB cords. Shannon has been through like three of these iPhone chargers because what happens is you go to set up the bed, we have to lift this bench up and the wires get caught in between the platform of the bench here in this actual power station. So then they get caught and you don't realize they're in there and then you try to pull them out and they rip and they've gone all messed up. It's really just not a great solution. So what I'm gonna do is basically just relocate everything that's on here and also add a few things as well. And this whole thing is just gonna come out. This space will be open. It'll make it like a hundred times easier for us to set up the bed. We won't pinch our hands in there and hopefully we won't destroy any more phone charging cables. <laughs> Before continuing on, I want to thank Omaze for sponsoring this video. Omaze is an organization that works to support charitable causes while also giving you the chance to win some really awesome prizes. And this week, if you follow the link in the description below, omaze.com slash EVL Airstream, you can enter for a chance to win an Airstream Interstate 24X camper van. This camper van is pretty awesome. It features a modular interior setup that you can fit and customize to your own needs. It also has a lot of other things going on in there. It actually has an air conditioner, two burner cooktop, 
fridge, everything that you can need. Shower, bathroom system, solar on the roof. It has a beefed up suspension system as well to help you go wherever you wanna go with this thing. And you can also make a contribution to the Jimmy Johnson Foundation, awesome organization. Overall, follow that link in the description below to enter for your chance to win this really cool Airstream camper van. Thank you again, Omaze, for sponsoring this video. This area here is a complete disaster. There's just wires everywhere. And it got a lot worse when I put the Blue Eddy down there because I had to add more things in and I didn't really clean it up that well. And it's really, really bad. Like I need to basically pull everything out and redo it. I wanna make sure that it looks a lot cleaner. This new system is gonna be a lot better organized. So I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's gonna be a challenge, but at the same time, I think it'll look a lot nicer and definitely be more efficient. I also need to figure out where I'm gonna put all of those outlets that I just yanked out, that power station that I had there. I mean, I have to relocate all that stuff and then add to it as well. So what I think I'm gonna do is actually put a USB charging station with six USB outlets up behind this door here for our storage. So it'll be hidden back there and I can plug in like camera batteries and then our tablets and stuff like that all up there. And then underneath the sink, right where the switch is for the water pump, I'm gonna put one of these guys. I'm gonna install one of these with the two 110 outlets. And then I'm also gonna put the switch for the inverter there. And then I'm gonna take the other one of these that we have actually, it's just lying around, we haven't even used it. And I'm gonna put it underneath the wagon table. Before when I would sit at the desk here, I'd have to run the charger for my laptop like across my body <laughs> to get to this thing over here on this side and plug it in. It was not ideal, like it needs to be somewhere off. It'll be a lot better if it can just drop right down behind, like beneath the table and plug right in. So we are planning to use the AGM battery that we already have. It's a 120 amp hour AGM lead acid battery. I know, I know, why would you go with AGM instead of lithium? But like I said, we already had this. And to be quite honest with you guys, I just spent over $500 on all the components to the system. And I just don't have an additional 700 to a thousand dollars to invest in the lithium battery that I want. So I'm just gonna have to wait a little while. I just, I can't afford it right now. I'm gonna have to wait at least a few more months, maybe save up some money. And then the good news about this system is that it's gonna be very plug and play. I can pull that AGM battery out of there and put in a new lithium battery, change a few settings on the charge controller and it'll be ready to go. So that is my plan at some point down the line, but for now, we're just gonna run with this. I think it's gonna be good enough for what we need, especially considering that it's gonna charge while we're driving. I've been putting this project here off since I started this. Although in hindsight, it probably should have been the first thing that I did considering it's like 85 degrees inside this fan. It's been pretty hot the past few days. So this process here, doing this install, did take the better part of the past three days to do. But that being said, I am so excited about this end result here, guys. Like, I have not been this excited about a project that I've done in the van or even on a van build or anything 
in a long time. For some reason, building it from scratch like this, like, it's just a lot more efficient than anything I've had before, and it's hard for me to believe that I haven't done this over the past few years. It just, it's so much more efficient. I saved a ton of space. The area where that house battery was, that whole storage area under the van, it's completely empty right now. And then on top of that, the power system itself is so compact that I can actually use the area where it is for some storage. You know, I'm not gonna put anything in there that I'm taking in and out every day, but a couple of things can totally fit in there. Overall, it seems to be working really well. It's been a few days now where I've been just monitoring it, keeping the fridge running 24-7 in here. The panels are playing really well with that charge controller, and then I don't even have to think about it. I can just start the van up. I've gone for a few drives here and there, and it just charges the batteries, and I don't have to switch anything. I don't have to do anything. It just automatically does it. It's pretty cool, guys. I want to give you a little tour, though, of this new power setup that I have. So this is where the entire power system lives. Made a little diagram on the underside of this just so I don't forget where all my fuses are. Right here on the right, we have the 120 amp hour AGM battery. Like I said before, I will replace that with lithium at some point, but it's probably going to be at least a few months before I can afford to get the lithium one that I want. For now, that should work well. It's been working well the last few days. This is the charge controller here. It is a 30 amp MPPT and DC to DC charger all in one, built by Renogy. I have the solar wires here running into the charge controller and then I also used a four gauge cable to connect the positive terminal of the starting battery to the charge controller here. I ran it through a couple of breakers and really I just followed the wiring diagram exactly. I'm going to put a link in the description below to Will Prowse's website. It was super helpful guys and it really all just worked. I set it all up, tied everything in and then powered it all on. and. Haven't really had to think about it since then. It's it's working really, really well. I had this 1000 watt inverter left over from the previous setup. So we went with this. It's a pure sine wave inverter. Should be perfect for what we need and what we use on a day-to-day -day basis. I did run a couple of AC outlets right here along with USB. This is the switch for the inverter right there. So real easy just to turn the inverter on and off. And then that's right next to the uh, the switch for the water pump. I also put another AC outlet set up right here underneath the lag and table mount. And then inside here, there's this little guy. This is an adapter for the charge controller and it's a Bluetooth monitor. And then you can connect your phone with the Renergy app that they have in order to monitor what's going on with the charge controller. I will say that the app kind of sucks. Like it doesn't really work very well. It constantly disconnects. You have to reconnect it and then it, you know, got to close the app and reopen the app. It doesn't really play well with it all. Also, I'm not even really 100% sure that some of the information is perfectly accurate, but it works a little bit, at least enough for me to monitor some of the things that are going on with the battery, as long as I have some patience. I feel like Renergy could definitely fix that and could spend a little bit of time making the app a little bit better so that you could then get a better idea of what's going on with the system but hey it is what it is at least it's something it's better than nothing and it, you know it's definitely something that i'm going to find myself using every day the rest of the time that i spent with this install was mostly just tucking wires away running wires to weird spots i did put a usb charging station up here behind this door so that i can charge up camera batteries tablets all that stuff and i also ran a couple of usb wires to the head of the bed on each side so that shannon and i can plug in our phones at night and have them next to us if we need them the whole thing is tied together with the 200 watts of flexible solar panels that we have on the roof. We're not really willing to put anything more than that because we don't want to block our skylights. This is like one of our favorite things about the van. So you start covering those up with more panels. Yeah, it'd be nice to have more solar power, but we don't really want to sacrifice that. So we're going to run with this system. I think I think it's going to work out really well though, guys. This is going to be a lot better than anything we've had previously. It's just a lot more streamlined, a lot better organized. And I'm honestly looking forward to building another system at some point. I can't wait to do this again because I really did enjoy it. It's tedious. It definitely takes time up front, but I really do believe it's going to be 100% worth it. Thank you guys for watching this video and for checking in. I'll keep you all posted over the next few weeks. We're going to be doing a few other things around the van to get it back and ready for the road. Special thank you to Omaze for sponsoring this video and especially to my Patreon pledges for supporting this journey. I'll talk to you all in the next one.